Welcome to eCancer TV. Thank you. You're a radiation therapist in Leiden, and you've been speaking here at ASCO in Chicago about endometrial cancer. So what's new about endometrial cancer? That's right. I talked about endometrial cancer focusing on the recent developments and trends in adjuvant therapy. So uh, recently we have seen three or four large randomized trials establishing the role of radiotherapy, mm -hmm. that external beam radiotherapy reduces local region relapse but without a survival difference. And so we reduce the indications for radiotherapy, omitting radiotherapy if patients were at low risk for recurrence because radiation can also be effectively used as a salvage treatment. And we went on for the patient with high intermediate risk factors, grade three, or deep invasion, age over 60. We did a trial establishing the role of vaginal brachytherapy, yeah. looking at local control with vaginal brachytherapy. Brachytherapy using what? Sorry? Using what kind of brachytherapy? Vaginal full brachytherapy, so okay. treating the upper half. It's a, it's a smaller volume you treat, but as 75% of all patients in the intermediate risk trials had a recurrence in the vaginal fold, in the oh. upper vaginal, Vaginal brachytherapy turned out in PORTEC 2 trial to be as effective as external beam radiotherapy in reducing uh, vaginal recurrence to almost under 2% and with better quality of life and less toxicity than external beam radiotherapy. So the subsequent focus was on higher risk disease. That's only 15% of all patients. And I summarized basically the current evidence of the, the trials which have compared chemotherapy instead of radiotherapy, and those trials basically have, most have been negative. So now there are more recent trials uh, using combinations of chemotherapy and radiotherapy and looking at survival benefits by that approach. When I was in Holland, we used radiotherapy together with chemotherapy, but that's not what you're talking about. You're talking about radiotherapy and then uh, adjuvant in the sense of following? Well, well or, of course, or... we hadn't been using that in endometrial carcinoma. No, no. But now, currently, there are now three venomized trials running. PORTEC-3 is one of them, but there are also two GUG trials who both have a combination of radiotherapy with concomitant chemotherapy, two cycles of cisplatinum during radiotherapy, and four cycles of carboplatin and paclitaxel after to reduce the risk of dyspnea elasticity. So you're giving cisplatin as a chemosensitizer, which exactly. is what we developed uh, a while back, and then carboplatin and taxol. afterwards. Yeah. Carboplatin because? Carboplatin and taxol. And taxol, okay. Because the, if you really look at the trials which have been done for metastatic disease, the current really proven standard is taxol and adramycin and platinum, which is very toxic. And there are uh, quite a number of phase two trials showing that carboplatin and taxol is as effective but has less toxicity. Okay. So current trials are in fact all using carboplatin and platinum. And, you're taxol. Using, and you're, of course you've got an older age population exactly. To, to, exactly. To, to think about. Especially among high risk patients because for endometrial carcinoma, age is an adverse prognostic factor. Advancing age yeah. means lower uh, survival rates, more metastasis. So you look really at the elderly patient group with comorbidities, and that's why carboplatin and paclitaxel has a better profile for treating this Are patient. there any biomarkers nowadays in endometrial carcinoma, or are you still using grading histologically, looking down the microscope? It, it's a very good question. We have been looking at biomarkers. We've been, uh, in, at Leiden, we've been, we've been looking at um, beta uh and P10 and P353, and ER and PR, but at this time there is no biological m marker which no. is better than the no old fashioned stage, grade, age, histological type, lymph vascular space invasion, and death of myometrial invasion. It's interesting that when people were talking about the risks of uh, tamoxifen as an adjuvant in, in breast cancer, people say, well, okay, we know about the endometrial carcinoma, but you don't want you to worry about that because, of course, you cure them all, but of course, you don't cure them all. And it's this 15% that you're talking about that right. are, are, are dying of yeah. endometrial carcinoma. Um, what's the next step? What are, what are the, the next couple of years uh, going to look like? Well, I hope over a couple of years we will have data from three current randomized trials, and that will really add to the, to the body of, uh, of evidence because to date there has only been two trials which were in some way positive for uh, the addition of chemotherapy. There was GUG 122 for advanced disease, stage three and four, showing that intensive chemotherapy was better than whole abdominal irradiation, yeah. but I don't think we, that whole abdominal radiation would be the way forward. And there was the NSGO ERTC trial, 
which just will be published, I think, next week or the week after in the European Journal of Cancer. And they had a better progression-free survival with four cycles of chemotherapy after or before radiotherapy, but no overall survival difference. So that's the first weak evidence we have, and we are building on that with three trials at the moment. Well, success, and thank you very much for speaking to us, Dr. Kretzer. Thank, thank you. you.